Man, you hear this bullshit they be talking? Every day, man, it's like these motherfuckers is just like professional liars, you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> wow. Listen. Bin Laden then blow up the projects. It was your nigga. Tell the truth, nigga. Push knock down the tower. Tell the truth, nigga. Push knock down the tower. Tell the truth, nigga. Bin Laden then blow up the projects. It was your nigga. Tell the truth, nigga. Push knock down the tower. Tell the truth, nigga. Push knock down the towers. I pledge no allegiance, nigga. Fuck the president's speeches. I'm baptized by America and covered in leeches. The dirty water that bleeds. Your soul and your facial features Drown you in propaganda that they spit through the speakers And if you speak about the evil that the government does The Patriot Act to track you to the type of your blood They try to frame you and say you was trying to sell drugs And throw a federal indictment on niggas to show you love This shit is run by fake Christians, fake politicians Look at their mansions and look at the conditions you live in All they talk about is terrorism on television They tell you to listen, but they don't really tell you their mission They funded Al-Qaeda and now they blame the Muslim religion Even though Bin Laden was a CIA tactician They gave him billions of dollars And they funded his purpose Fahrenheit 9-11 That's just scratching the surface Bin Laden then blow up the projects It was your nigga Tell the truth nigga Push knock down the tower Tell the truth nigga Push knock down the tower Tell the truth nigga Bin Laden then blow up the projects It was your nigga Tell the truth nigga Push knock down the tower Tell the truth nigga Push Say the rebels in Iraq still fight for Saddam, but that's bullshit. I'll show you why it's totally wrong. Cause if another country invaded the hood tonight, it'll be warfare through Harlem and Washington Heights. I wouldn't be fighting for Bush or white America's dream. I'll be fighting for my people's survival and self-esteem. I wouldn't fight for racist churches from the South, my nigga. I'll be fighting to keep the occupation out, my nigga. You ever clock someone who talk shit but look at you wrong? Imagine if they shot at you and was raping your moms. And of course Saddam Hussein had chemical. Weapons, we sold them that shit after Ronald Reagan's election. Mercenary contractors fighting a new era. Corporate military banking off the war on terror. They controlling the ghetto with the fear of attack. Trying to distract the fact that they engineering the crack. So I'm strapped like Lee Malvo holding a sniper rifle. These bullets will touch your kids, and I don't mean like Michael. Your body be sent to the morgue, stripped down and recycled. I fire on house niggas that support you and like you. Cause innocent people get murdered in the struggle daily. And poor people never get. Shit and struggle daily This ain't no alien conspiracy theory This shit is real Written on a dollar underneath the Masonic seal Y'all don't rap the dead presidents I'd rather see the president dead It's never been said but I said precedents Bin Laden blow up the projects It was your nigga Tell the truth nigga Push knock down the tower Tell the truth nigga Push knock down the tower Tell the truth nigga Bin Laden then blow up the projects It was your nigga Verbose.xyz tonight. Everybody knows what day it is, but I'm going to tell you anyway. 9 11, 18 years later, a moment in history that changed us forever, especially here in America. A moment where over 6,000 people lost their lives and countless others, their lives were changed forever. But guess what? Every single American after 9 11 was changed. Everywhere in the world was changed. And why is that? Because they fucking snuck another one at us to take away all of our fucking rights. Here we are tonight, on one, <laughs> double on one. And by the way, fuck your government job, I don't need it. Uh, definitely not an agent. I think Crafter is definitely not an agent. We got a Gary tonight. DTM is definitely not an agent. Go you fuck yourself. Fuck yeah. No, fuck I ain't. I'm joined tonight by, obviously, my man, Crafter, a.k.a. my dick run, a.k.a. Black Jesus, a.k.a. Allah Akbar, a.k.a. Um, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> Fuck and, the government. Uh, now yeah. everyone's an inside job. Yeah. And uh, we got a Gary tonight. We're trying him out for a little bit, and he's been on the show before. He's, you know, you know him best by DTM, Down to Munch, also known as Dantos the Mutilator. We can hang out tonight. I, I told him we're on one, you know. Hold on to the seat of your pants, bro, because we're going hard tonight. And uh, I hope you don't want to ever have some sort of clearance with the government because it's over. It's over. Thank you. And if you're watching it out there and if you're listening out and listening, I'd super appreciate it. Uh, Tonight we're very excited about this because 
this means a lot, I think, to uh, conspiracy minded people to be able to talk in in groups about like what they really see, what they've researched and what they feel that's going on. Um, considering in my mind, when a government doesn't divulge what's going on and the facts don't add up in a way that things uh, that were divulged to us could actually happen in reality, you know, it, it begs the question. And I think that the one thing that's good about the never forget is that generations to come will never forget that American rights were taken away at the expense of other American lives. Um, I don't know, man. I'm coming in hot today. What do you What do you guys think? Uh, wh- who Who perp- What's going on with 9/11? 18 years later, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think you're you're dead on. You're you're right in the right track. That's kind of what happened. I mean, it's it's kind of the first time you can say in American history that people died for your rights to be taken. Not people died for your freedom. Not people died for fucking you know the country to become better. But people were killed and you got less. You know that they took away things because of what happened to these people. And 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 I feel that that it was you know perpetrated by multiple spy agencies, some jihadist groups, and you know the CIA. I feel like there there's a lot of collusion going on here. Uh, some of them you know to, uh, to to just let people into the country, others to make sure they got trained, um, some to maybe you know set some explosives in the basement or some thermite around some support columns, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. Um, what about you know um, body counts? Uh, what about black boxes? Like, aren't these things that we could refer to to kind of uh, paint a bigger picture? I mean, uh, we wish we could, uh, but I don't think they recovered black boxes from Towers 1 or 2, uh, Flight 11 and Flight 175. And they only recovered the black box from the plane that hit the Pentagon, Flight 77. And not from Flight 93? Yeah, I I believe the Flight 93 recorder was completely destroyed. Hmm, interesting. It probably uh, disintegrated when... uh, it was hit by the missile. Yep. Never know. <laughs> and Building 7, man, I mean, maybe I'm jumping the gun on this a little bit, but Building 7, it's something that's always baffled me uh, from the, from day one, from ground zero day one to now, is why did that building fall? And I never really thought about, uh, thought about it other than, you know, con- obvious controlled demolition, obviously getting rid of some sort of records in there. Obviously, there's something in that building that they wanted to demolish and they took advantage of that time but i never thought about the uh orchestration of what it would be like to see the reality you know of uh creating 9-11 like 9-11 being an inside job from every moment like let's say that those planes are planned to hit when bombs were going off right and uh, you had two planes that hit perfect timing bombs went off under so that you that uh, you had a certain amount of time uh, that that structure was going to pancake in. They yeah. thought that Flight 93 was going to hit Building 7, <laughs> you know, and the controlled demolition was just set for 530 because that's how uh, how, how it linked up. Yeah, the, it would be, you know, follow the other pattern of it would take a plane hit, and then hour to two hours later it would collapse. Wow, we just got censored by government. Yeah, I feel like we did. <laughs> Is that what just happened? That's just what happened. I mean, uh, it's it's just it's just so coincidental that, that all these buildings fell the way they did, just with structural damage. Um, I mean, that new report about uh, Building Seven just came out, so I've been a little bit more researching to it, reading the official reports. I mean, and the new report says they you know, definitely uh, released by University of Alaska. Uh, they did release all their data, so it can be peer reviewed, uh, unlike the government reports. <laughs> Um, that That's they, good. They're saying that the fires did not bring down the building. That the only possible way was for all the support beams to fail simultaneously, which you know is without them saying it outright is, is a demolition. Um, mm. And so I started like really wanting to look into this. New reports coming out. It's all over the news. I started looking at pictures. I started looking at the the the, the lawsuit where the, the one of the the planners uh, pled guilty in court. Um, and the amount of damage to that building was significant. Like, I mean, there was at least 20 stories missing like, half of their wall. Like, the corner support structures were missing on at least, you know, like two corners. I mean, like, it's very possible, you know, with sustained fires, I feel like it might be able to fall. And, and that's just crazy to say that after the, the, the data is showing otherwise that I'm like, wait, wait, maybe it was possible. But I guess mm-hmm. maybe that's just the contrarian conspiracy theorist in me. 
Indeed. And, you know, you hear like a lot of that um, audio has recently become declassified. And a lot, there's this, I, th- I think there's this whole documentary now of like audio clips of people before, you know, their ultimate demise uh, during 9 11. And it was, you know, they're describing how the plane hit in such a way that uh, it it fucked up everything from like the 80, 80th or 87th floor up to like one, um, one of six, I think it was, was affected. Yeah, yeah, I think that's but about it, right. But then, like, there were support structures underneath that, like, to, to, like, floor 80 that were fucked. You couldn't find an exit anywhere. So, basically, from, like, 80 up, you were, you're dead. Like, unless you were some sort of master climber. But even then, I would imagine trying to climb something super jagged, you know? Imagine trying to cl- climb wrought iron that's been split. I, I couldn't even fucking imagine. And then, like, the, <laughs> the feeling of being sucked off the building because you're so fucking high up, like... I couldn't even imagine, you know. <clears throat> One of them was really crazy because the the guy ends up calling uh, someone through uh, the Washington Post or New York Times or something, um, and they end up getting passion to like NBC New York Live. And this guy's like, you know, hey, we're we're you know things are pretty bad up here, but we're doing doing all right. You know, families don't freak out and stuff like that. And ultimately, that part of the building is what caused. Well, official reports caused the the you know structural um, collapse of that building, and to be at a place where you couldn't get down. Imagine you're on you you know you're on like flight seventy, and shit's fucked up, and you know all your computer shit's fucked, and like all the windows are broken out, and you know you, there's probably you know parts of the ceiling that are that are you know caving in, but you can still get to exits and like leave the building, right? I couldn't imagine being on floors of, you know, 80 and above being like, well, fuck, (laughs) you know, are you one of those guys that like, uh, is like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to like fly off the building and see what happens. I mean, supposedly some guy fucking lived. Supposedly some guy like on the 93rd floor while it collapsed, like surfed the rubble down and like maybe broke his legs or some shit like that, but lived. Uh, If I can get Gary, I mean, you could Google this. I think it's like the surfer 9-11. I think that's Gary, will you? uh, All right. um, Yeah. Thank you, sir. And I feel like it's one of the most outrageous stories that, that I've heard. Like you're telling me. That this is such a, a massive amount of power and movement that concrete is crumbling into fucking dust. Steel is flying off the fucking building. But this guy sitting in his office just fucking slid down like a fucking big office, like a big uh, a big slide. Like like I, I just don't I just don't. I mean I guess I guess all things are possible, but it just seems so crazy. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of fantastic stories about 9/11 phone calls from planes at times where uh, that'd be pretty difficult, especially for the altitudes that they're received at. Um, um, you know, the, 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 the whole pancake of pancake, even excuse me, the whole pancaking of the building. Um, there's just fantastic things about it. Like nine uh, 11 is just riddled with like, this shouldn't be possible in, in physics and timeline yet yet it does exist uh building seven riddle me that you know um <laughs> i don't know i feel like we could, we should consult someone about building seven uh <laughs> uh i do have some clips i have some 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 fun ones and some shit that's come out today you know like it's interesting to to go back and listen to shit um but at the same token what happened 18 years later right uh what <laughs> like Fucking 18, 18 years. Nine uh, eleven is like can officially now smoke and go to war, right? Like, what what are people thinking these days about this? Um, you know, do you know who David Icke is? Yeah, I know David Icke says that moon is hollow. Reptilian people control the world. They are the elites. They are shapeshifters, and the moon's a moon base, and they're all controlling us through TV, radio, propaganda, and uh, other waves. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty versed. Um, uh, before we go there, uh, before we ride the fucking reptilian, what, Danto, did you come up with a 9-11 surfer? Yeah, I did. I put it in conspiracy. I figured that. Ooh, conspiracy. Um, uh, yeah, that guy, uh, Pasquale Bazzelli. I guess it was only 15 floors that he surfed down. But he, he worked on That's the That's still pretty incredible. Yeah, took an elevator down to 44 
ran down to the 15th and it collapsed and then surfed out from the 15th floor. So, I mean, that's 10 that's feet, 50, crazy. that's 150 feet up, you know, like that's still insane. I mean, what's uh, crazier that or like being the pilot, you know, the hijacker on, on the first flight and then fucking crashing into the plane and then shit fucking explodes and collapses and shit. But all of a sudden your passport's found. <laughs> yeah, your passport's found covered in jet fuel, <laughs> but it doesn't burn. But it, yeah, exactly. The jet fuel put out the just it was so much it doused it out and perfectly preserved it. Yep. Um, and I, I don't know, that, that which uh, I, Muhammad Atta was one of them. Um, was, he's he was one of the pilots. He was from Egypt. Um, he he flew into one of the towers. He, he flew out of Boston. I think it might have been flight uh, eleven. Might have been the first plane. Um, and he was was a very weird character in the whole thing that he's been caught for multiple times uh, for doing these kind of things and planning attacks. And he was even like knew all of the the 9/11 hijackers previously in Hamburg, Germany, um, where they you know planned uh, things and planned to go to Chechnya to fight Russia, went to Afghanistan, met Bin Laden to help fight in that and be trained. Like, there's a long history with this guy that seems like there's no reason this guy should have been let in the fucking country. There's no fucking reason. And, and right. somehow he came in on his real name with his real fucking ID and, and, and no one questioned it. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. This guy uh, came out with this statement today. Uh, I, uh, Ayman al-Wahiri. Uh, apparently he's number two to like fucking Bin Laden. And he's rejoicing this year. Here, let me play this quick, quick clip. I think this is NBC out of New York. This guy's also Egyptian. Major Al-Qaeda figure behind Egyptian. the 9-11 attack Bisexual. remains on the loose to this day. And today, Ayman al-Zawahiri put out another video to again celebrate the slaughter of thousands of Americans 18 years ago. The CIA and the U.S. military are trying to find fuck. that Al-Qaeda leader. But where has he been hiding ago. and why hasn't he been found? Our chief investigative reporter, Jonathan Deese, has taken a closer look and he has more now on the hunt, Jonathan, for al-Zawahiri. Yeah, David, Stacy. analysts believe al-Zawahiri has been hiding in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region with little use of cell phones, little contact with the outside world. But he is still releasing videos, three in just the last few weeks, including one today. But he looks younger. Hmm, that, that's familiar. This is one of the key faces of alaykum, my dude. evil. And today, Ayman al-Zawahiri lived up to that billing releasing a video on the 9-11 anniversary, calling the killing of 3,000 people, quote, blessed raids. He was number two. He has the blood of thousands of Americans blessed on raids. his hands. Is that like Gates? Minority leader Chuck Schumer is one of the few on Capitol Hill Probably. who gets regular briefings from intelligence officials on the hunt for al-Zawahiri. A lot of the briefings we get are classified, but I can tell you that finding El Zawahiri is uh, an extremely high priority. Another boogeyman that we can't find. El was alongside yeah. Osama bin Laden. Yeah, that's what it feels when like. The 9-11 attacks were planned. After bin Laden was found and killed in Pakistan, Al Zawahiri took over a weakened Al-Qaeda. Okay, I see you. Overshadowed in recent years by ISIS. Al Zawahiri still trying to rally Al-Qaeda followers in Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia, and Syria to carry out attacks against the West as the CIA is still trying to find where he's hiding. I think if you ask for a best guess, people expect Zawahiri to turn up whenever he does turn up somewhere in the AFPAC region. Joshua Giltzer was director of counterterrorism at the National Security Council from 2015 through 17. He says intelligence and counterterror officials are devoting human and tech sources to try to track him. But there are several other priorities, like stopping the spread of ISIS and stopping lone wolf and domestic actors. All of them are important counterterrorism priorities. But I suspect that anything that links back to the 9-11 attacks at the level of seniority we know Zawahiri had, I suspect that continues to get attention too. Al Zawahiri is not just linked to 9-11, but other past Al-Qaeda attacks, ranging from the East African embassy bombings to the USS Cole. With Al-Qaeda's affiliate in Yemen, claiming responsibility for more recent plots, like the 2015 Charlie Hebdo shootings in Paris. Geltzer says not getting al Zawahiri is frustrating, but there have been many successes since 9-11 in preventing the next big attack. Big picture, the goal is to protect Americans. 
It isn't a perfect track record since 9-11, but I think it's a pretty God extraordinary one. Also here, he has survived at least four U.S. strikes, but officials tell us there have been no close calls since 2007. As for his video released today, unclear exactly when it was filmed, but his reference to several specific events suggests it was made very recently. Stacy, Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. So, yeah, that's funny that they mentioned that then. It's not clear when. It Who knows? <clears throat> Maybe this is an old-ass video and they're just trying to pump up some shit. You know what I mean? Like you said earlier, the new boogeyman, the new 9-11 boogeyman. Yeah. Never forget he. I mean, it's, it's like all these guys, uh, Al Qaeda, Bin Laden, they all started as, you know, like um, CIA trained plants. They were, they were the CIA's dogs. They were the, the muscle in Afghanistan. Uh, they were, you know, the ones they could, you know, use to uh, upset you know, political balances or cause problems in other countries. Um, and it's the same thing they did in Syria, Libya. Um, and they, they spread this disease of Islamic fucking fanaticism, Wahhabism, out of Saudi Arabia. Um, I mean, most uh, a couple of the pilots on 9/11 of the hijacked planes were imams in Saudi Arabia. They were preachers. Why is it that? Why is it that? So a mom is preacher. Interesting. But why is it that like 9/11 being so closely tied to uh, the soils of Saudi Arabia that we still perpetuate business deals, including nuclear deals, with Saudi Arabia? Why is that still a thing? Yeah, or defend them when they like literally dismember, you know, member their own citizens, and in, inside um, embassies and stuff. We, you know, we defend them for those kind of things, and we trade them nuclear weapons, and we, we provided them the most advanced military in the Middle East besides our own. Um, it, it's mm. it's it's kind of outrageous, uh, mm. the the ways that we're treating this this ass backwards, terrorist fueled country. I had mentioned before that. You know, 9-11 is rich with conspiracy theory and, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head with David Icke. But um, uh, it'd be interesting to hear words from David Icke, right? Like this day, day and age, this day and age, you know, this ain't the 80s anymore after he like ditched out on his uh, broadcasting career as a sports broadcaster to become one of the most infamous <laughs> conspiracy theorists in existence. What, what would he say today about 9-11? And um, I think uh, you and all seven of our viewers are very curious to, to know this as well. Um, here's David Icke's take on Building 7. Most people, well, whether it's still most people, I don't know, but one heck of a lot of people have no idea that three buildings fell on 9-11. There was the, the two World Trade Center towers. There was Building 7. Building 7 was owned by Larry Silverstein before he bought the lease, weeks before 9-11, and increased dramatically the um, insurance in the case of a terrorist attack. Uh, got the lease on the uh, World Trade Center towers, which we can get into later, because Larry Silverstein absolutely needs to be in public view. Um, so Building 7 was a 47-story steel frame building. And... It fell at 5.20 in the afternoon on 9-11, having not been hit by a plane. And if you look at it, you can go on the internet, put in YouTube Building 7 Collapse, you will see the most obvious controlled demolition you will ever see. The first 2.5 seconds of that building falling were in free fall speed, because what was below as the top fell, had already gone because it was a controlled demolition. You see um, every now and again, you see on the news, you see stadiums blown up and big towers come down and they fall. They don't fall over where they can hit other buildings. They fall on their own footprint. It's exactly what Building 7 did. What the official story says, he takes a breath because even I can't believe it, um, and this is the official government explanation of why Building 7 fell, was because of office furnishings fires, which would never even get close to the heat necessary to destabilise a building. And Building 7 coming down through fire, not even from a plane hit, but from office furnishings, official story, 
um, makes it before and since in the whole of architectural engineering history, the first steel frame building to fall and collapse because of fire. Um, And as synchronicity would have it, this very week, the University of Alaska Fairbanks Uh, has produced a report after a four-year study into asking the question, could Building 7 have fallen because of fire? I cover the interim report in the book. This week, they produced their final report. And they've said these are academics, and engineers, and building people. No way could Building 7 have fallen through uh, fire. So Building 7 is a massive symbol of the lie that is 9-11 because it could not uh, have fallen. And, and I quote in the book so many different building experts, engineers, architects, saying it's a controlled demolition, Building 7. And this even, uh, of course, people won't realise, most people won't realise, there are groups of experts in their field like architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, pilots for 9-11 Truth, firefighters for 9-11 Truth, a great stream of them that have been created since 9-11 to challenge different aspects of the official story, which makes no sense. And so we have um, a situation where Building 7 was a controlled demolition quite demonstrably. And you know who told us it was? Larry Silverstein, the owner, he made a big mistake. He was caught with his uh, with his pants down here. He was um, interviewed on a PBS public service broadcasting documentary about 9-11. Not long afterwards or some time afterwards. And he was describing what happened that afternoon in regard to Building 7. He said what happened and I quote him word for word in the book, and you can see it on the internet, you see the clip. He said, what happened was the fire commander came to me and said that Building 7 was unstable. And Silverstein, uh, who made a fortune out of the insurance payout, uh, said, well, you know, there's been such a loss of life that, Let's just pull it. it. Means control demolition the building, and he said. And then we sat there later in the afternoon and we watched the building come down. One, that fire commander has never come forward and said yes, we had that conversation. Never happened. Uh, and secondly, there's this little matter. First of all, um, fire officers do not control demolish buildings. Experts do. And secondly, it takes weeks to put the charges in the right places within a building the size of Building 7 for the building to be made to fall on its own footprint in a controlled demolition, which is exactly what Building 7 did. So, first of all, building experts say it's a controlled demolition. And secondly, um, the uh, Silverstein said it is and describes a story of how it came down, which is absolutely impossible. So, yeah. So, um, this guy, Silverstein, didn't he have, like, a mad... He didn't own the building very long, and he had a crazy fucking uh, insurance policy, and he fucking made a killing off this shit, right? Right? Am I right or am I right? I mean, he made, like, $4.5 billion um, in insurance payouts. Yeah. My fucking god, dude. Building 7. And uh, uh, on this whole thing of like let's just pull it. Right? Um wasn't that his decision? How can he make money when he decided to destroy his own building? I mean, and that begs the qu- and that begs the question too. Like when you if you can say as a, a building owner or an engineer or an expert uh the damage that around this is too great. We need to, you know, 
pull the support uh, beam or support column or support wall or whatever and take down this building. Is that accessible to any building? Is, is what access cuts for? What? Sorry. It is, is the ability to, you know, quote unquote, pull a building. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to control demolition in this building today. We're going to pull it, you know? I mean, do, do you think, like, any building has that capability? Like, fuck, I mean, we got it. It's somewhere another, to get this yeah, the, the, There's definitely always a way to pull a building. Um, but, like, a building as large as the World Trade Center. I don't know if you could plan that in under an hour. I don't know if you could plan that in, in a day. It would it'd probably take weeks. How did that happen? I mean, like we're, we're, we're diving into things tonight and I want to, I want to go out there and say, you know, I, I, I personally uh, would support crafter for president for 2020. We're going to shoot for 2024. Um, he should be a government official. Uh, and the only government official he should be is president. Uh, we'll push for that, but we're, we'll try not. We'll try to toe the line and go as far as we possibly can without uh, preventing Kraft from being elected president. <laughs> well, let's let's throw that out the window right now. Um, the, there's a serious Israel connection to 9/11. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> there's a serious Israel connection to 9/11. Um, in March 2000 and 2001, um, there's this team of art students that are from Israel. Um, that worked on an art project, quote unquote, art project, to affect like lights and, and, and broadcast things on the side of the building. I'll post an image in conspiracy if uh, if it will let me. <laughs> um, you know, called E Team, um, and they would you know use repelling equipment and other things like that to adjust lighting to you know make different displays on the windows of World Trade Center. Uh, this picture is World T Towers One, Two, and Seven. Um, and that's building seven. Yeah. In the foreground. Interesting. I didn't realize how close it was to the towers, which would make it easy for insurance companies to accept the fact that you quote unquote pulled. Yeah. And, um, and like in, in the pictures of them doing their work, you can see them wearing harnesses, uh, having pulley systems around, um, and, and things like this, like cardboard boxes taped up on walls, which are for blasting caps. Um, so, I mean, they, there was groups of people uh, from Israel, uh, some of them that were known to work for Israeli intelligence previously, or as we know in Israel, every single person at 18 has to join the military. That so a young group of art students is suspicious, especially from Israel, <laughs> um, yeah, because I mean, they're all in military, military service at 18. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, but they're going around in these harnesses with these blasting caps and other equipment to make uh, lights. Um, and it's, it's, it's just too weird that they were there alone in the building at night with full access to uh, you know, all the elevator shafts to the support structures. Um, and you can see where their logo is and where the first plane hit. <laughs> wow, that's interesting how that lines up. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, this is in verbose.xyz discord. Um, but yeah, I, I, my question to that is, does E-Team to this day, 18 years later, exist as an entity in any sort of way? N no, and, and you can't get a hold of any of these people, and there's really not much of an existence of them anymore. Um, it, it's very, very weird, kind of a unique thing. Um, and during this art project, because you know they were using blasting caps and stuff, it, for two weeks prior to 9-11, they stopped using drug-sniffing dogs, which they were using daily since the 1993 bombings. For, so for two weeks before 9-11, there was no drug-sniffing dogs looking for bombs in those buildings. Huh. Just for this stupid little project. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 I think it shows, like, you know, the kind of different agencies working together. Uh, the CIA pushing, you know, their Islamists, you know, push towards their jihad, uh, getting, you know, Israel's, uh, you know, uh, um, Mossad agencies to get in and do the dirty work for, you know, setting the explosives. Um, and it's just a matter of timing after that. I feel this going the same way as most of the conspiracies that we kind of scratch upon and dig upon and, you know, pass back, back and forth in our brains. And that's it's this overlying control of the whole world to enact the end of day scenario for all of the Abrahamic religions, like all at once. 
Like that's what it feels like, you know. Um, and it, it, it always seems to be these. It's like Christian, uh, uh, Jewish, or Muslim related groups. Although I think Muslims get a bad rap, man. I think that um, uh, this nine eleven has made me more than ever reflect on uh, Islamophobia. And I don't like gay ass words like that. But at the same token, I don't like hating on people because they're a certain religion. It's it's and, not like it's it's not just like a, a demonization of Arab people. It's also demonization of the tactics that an oppressed people would have to use against a superior army. You know, it, hmm. it, it's calling it less than human. It's it's terrorist. It's it's not thought out. It's not planned. It's just brutal. You know, but dropping missiles on a house for a hack is not. Fuck that shit, dude! Oh my god, that's uh, Israel versus Palestine. If you know, if you're uh, if a Palestine IP, no matter if it's confirmed or not <laughs> from that location, uh, whether or not it's a VPN or not, that's yet to ever be discovered. But <laughs> you know, and then it hits, and so one one official gets, and Israel gets fucking hacked. It's over. It's over, y'all. We're bombing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you think God is great? I'll show you how God, how great God. Is. But uh, I think about that. You know, it's like every all the optics that we always get: Muslim bad, Muslim bad, Muslim bad. But I feel like there's starting to be this uh, small but vocal contingency of conservatives, deeply racist, that believe, um, fucking. Um, that that believe that like Muslims are actually more virtuous than uh, the modern day Christian, that they reject homosexuality and their kids being exposed to homosexuality, and that being a virtuous thing. Uh, in some ways, I mean, you know, it reminds you of the old time, like your parents wanted to protect you from things and like didn't you know uh, didn't want you to be exposed to the wild ways of the world. But in other ways, it's like, how far have we changed in, uh, societally that could we accept um, a culture that rejects the majority of society? I mean, only time will tell on that one. <laughs> but my, I don't think every like my problem. It's this way to deflect away from israel it's a way to deflect away from saudi arabia we just call it like the the terrorists the you know the muslim extremist terrorists we 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 do that but then we look at anybody with you know that's wearing a a headpiece and fucking uh saying allah akbar we we want to demonize them yeah and we, and we don't look at the guy with the earpiece and the fucking black suit and the eyeglasses. We, right. Because they're the ones planning, scheming, looking to control the world. I mean, and, and that's what I'm really saying. It's, it's like, you know, we wanted to look for a different target. And, it, and then it's almost like uh, our guys, our CIA, hired the, these Al-Qaeda, or at least inspired them, or pushed them, or gave them the window, you know, or, or did all the above. Here's a target. We'll make sure you get in. Here's flight schools. Here's hotels to stay at. They probably did the whole damn thing. Got Mossad to fucking rig the buildings. And then, you know, the CIA was only into it because that's a Bush family thing. You know, George H.W. Bush was head of CIA at some point um, before he became president. Um, and then now when his son becomes president and Dick Cheney gets full control over military and defensive uh, you know, um, decisions, all of a sudden we experience a massive a terror attack that directly benefits him, his family, uh, their business competition, a.k.a. partners, the Bin Ladens. I mean, it, it's, it's just too good to be true. It, it's, there's no way this is just a whole bunch of series of coincidences. It, it had to be put together. Right, right. And there's so much money involved, too. Uh, and there is such a timeline, man. I, it goes back as far as Gaddafi in a lot of ways, where there was, like, the CIA training of Gaddafi and of bin Laden, of, like, Saddam Hussein, and just kind of released into this wild and it put into this war game. But I, also, I've heard you mention Mossad a couple times. What's, right. like, visible proof or, like, tangible proof that we could grab onto of connection of Mossad, which is, like, 
Israeli CIA essentially to 9-11? Um, Mossad definitely a real connection is uh, there's a, a thing called the Dancing Israelis. You can probably Google for that, Dancing Israelis 9-11. And there's a group of five people. Gary. Um, who were dancing with this moving van, uh, United Moving Services or Universal Moving Services, something very stupid and basic, um, but was a known Mossad front. Um, and uh, these people were filming the, the towers burning and like celebrating and smiling and taking pictures of them, like of each other in front of the towers burning. And neighbors called the police and the police came up and arrested them. And they were taken in by the FBI and they were questioned for a long time and eventually just deported back to Israel. And then when they were interviewed on Israeli TV, one of them says, you know, you know, they treated us like we were terrorists, but we were just there to film the event, you know, like, and, and then like other, weird. You know, other details come out, like there, there was a drawing on the side of their van of a plane hitting the World Trade Center. Like there's just weird little things like that. Like their logo of their company had that in it. And it's just like, is, is it a coincidence? Possibly. I mean, a plane in front of the World Trade Center, that's pretty much an everyday sight if based on where you sit in New York, you know, because, you know, distance can fuck with you. You can see planes landing and the World Trade Center in the distance. So who knows? Mm. But mm. All right. I'm looking it up now. Dancing Israelis. I, dancing Israelis. Uh, also, I have a, I have another. This one I'm pulling out of my ass. I haven't vetted it totally, but I, I did listen to part of it. And this is a um, this is a uh, the prime prime minister Netanyahu's remarks on 9/11. This is three years ago. This is a 15 year anniversary of 9/11. Um, I just I kind of want to hear his voice on this day, just to kind of like see if we could read between the lines on some. This guy, this motherfucker. There's some, uh, a section where it's quiet and he's walking up to a pedestal. Yeah, yeah, uh, we've 15 years uh, since the terrorist attacks uh, on 9-11. We remember the victims. We embrace their loved ones. We stand with our greatest ally, the United <coughs> States of America, and with other partners in the battle against militant Islamic terrorism that spreads its fear, its dread, its murder around the world. Our memories are long. Our determination is boundless. Civilized societies must band together to defeat these forces of darkness, and I'm sure we will. Come on, civilized society. White society, right? <laughs> Old man chopping baby dick and sucking the blood out society. Yeah, that that is the thing. That is the thing. Um, is it a coincidence that uh, Jeffrey's last name is Epstein? Oh, he was Jewish. He was a Jewish man. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to go too hard on the Jews. No, it, it's not all Jewish people. It's it's the problem with Israel. They mm. they are they are a, a a very negative nation with violent actions. Uh, they plan. They scheme against us. They don't care about the American interests more than how it benefits them directly. Um, they're not a good ally. They they are a toxic country, and they are the problem with the Middle East. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, don't you think that a lot of these like extremi- extremist cultures would kind of die out over time, like if if left unprovoked? <laughs> I mean, uh, that's that's hard to say. Um, I mean, with the rise of ISIS, people might argue otherwise. But now we, you know, thanks to you know Tulsi Gabbard, we see you know that much of the funding for ISIS and ISIL came from uh, Obama administration. Wow. And it's so funny how uh, Obama, on most occasions, would not refer to ISIS as ISIS, more as ISIL. It yeah. seems like... Because it's, it's gr- acknowledging that they own the Levant, which is Syria and Iraq. Yes, exactly. Mm. Wow, that's fucking sneaky. Yeah. And, and this I is mean, why... This, these are the things I don't like about Obama, you know? Like, uh, I get it. He was the most successful president or whatever, but I also think that... Uh, a, lot, a good car salesman can sell you a lemon. And you like him, and he's fucking you in the ass, and you still like him, but you end up with a shitty deal. And, you know? and he made the biggest mistake that I can never agree with as president, that you know the end justifies the means. It's the same mistake Bush tried to make in, in going to war after 9-11, you know, uh, ill-advised, with no plan, uh, and no way to even dictate when it's a win, uh, or what, you know, how, do you, how do you make it over? Um, 
it's, it's just a bad idea. The, the, you know, the end doesn't justify the means. You know, the means justify the end. You know, you have mm-hmm. to know what you did was the right thing. You know, and, and you try to correct it when it's wrong, not fucking blindly continue. Right. Indeed. Um, I've been sipping on this uh, bottle of whiskey for uh, the six thousand plus uh, victims of nine eleven. You guys are amazing. Uh, and 3, fuck 000. the people who around three thousand. Three thousand? Yeah. What what about uh, first responders? Uh, over four hundred first responders, but I think that's included in the count. Um, okay, interesting. And I mean, and that is the the horrible tragedy. There is is the loss of life of, of civilians, first responders, people who are going in there just trying to hope to save people, uh, firefighters, EMTs, police officers, uh, so many workers, fast food workers, janitors. Um, it's really the, the worst part about the whole thing. I mean. And I feel like the never forget part of it is that we have to, you know, eventually figure out why they died and why this happened to them and bring the people who are responsible to justice for it, whoever that aren't be, we, whatever side. Aren't we now finally uh, going to try? What? Isn't there like a trial for um, uh, one of the people involved yeah. uh, at uh, Guantanamo Bay? Yeah, it's, it's scheduled for uh, January 2021. Uh, you know, almost was it almost 20 years to, uh, to 19 years and a couple months um, to the day uh, in Guantanamo Bay. You know, so he doesn't really have many rights. It's a military tribunal. Uh, who knows if we'll even get to see full coverage or for to see drawings and the result after. But um, it, it's the first kind of progress that we've seen to you know someone being held there, you know, for so long. You know, I would love to five. investigate the evidence that's still available. Um, it's it's a shame so much was like deleted day one, you know. Um, did, were you saying something earlier today that the metal was literally melted down day one and uh, sold to China? As soon as possible, uh, the steel remains of World Trade Centers one and two, especially the top portions, were removed, melted down, and sold. Um, the the the. NIST, uh, you know, 9/11 Commission report was not able to test any of those metal samples. They were only tested the lower parts of towers one and two, um, and none of the steel in tower seven was tested at all. All of it mm-hmm. was sold off uh, to scrap almost immediately. Um, even though uh, pleas from investigators and victims and families, uh, you know, asked them not to, they were still sold off immediately. Even though there's still landfills full of body parts and other debris sitting in New York to this day. Fuck, that's so fucking crazy. So Ground uh, Zero still is like a graveyard. Yeah, go ahead. Not Ground Zero. It was all moved away. Um, oh, it, it right. That's right. They moved landfill. it off site and then and recycled just, from there. Just for Ground Zero remains uh, other pieces of it and you know things they find. Wallets, credit cards, fingers. Right, right. All right. Uh, Gary found what the thing you were looking for. It took me a minute. Okay. Tell us about it. It looks like it was just they were dancing and stuff like that. Just kind of like making a big joke about it, and then it looks like uh, they called on on them. There's actual pictures only thing. on this website you found too. The uh, the van that was out there. But I mean, like I watched a lot of nine eleven video today. Like I watched the the on the street <laughs> video. Um, uh, you know, the plane hits the tower, and this little old man is like, "No, no!" Like freaking out. Like his his life is like. Like, you know, like he understands instantly the consequences of that. I didn't see anybody celebrating, cheering, smiling. I mean, no one, even the people with the most demented of, of humors, you know, did not feel that way. What the fuck were these people thinking? Really? Wife material today made an interesting observation. Um, she deals with the public and, uh, uh, you know, f- filling out forms and things like that. And normally people are asking her what the date is all day. No one fucking asked her what the date was today. Everyone knows. It's, it's burned in. It, it's, it's such a shock. It was, it was so scarring. 9-11-19. That is today. Verbose.xyz. We're here giving it to you raw. 9-11 truths. I'm dropping 9-11 truth bombs all day. Don't for, Never forget, 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> Fuck right? you, George Am Bush. Right? Fuck you, Dick Cheney. Yeah. Fuck you, Donald Rumsfeld. All three of you guys neglected to do your jobs that morning. Um, all three of you lied about your timeline of events. Well, I mean, except George W. Bush. He didn't lie. 
Um, he was just sitting in a, a classroom. But Donald Rumsfeld continued to have coffee. Dick Cheney, you know, entered the bunker uh, when uh, before the Pentagon was attacked, but then on official report said he entered at 10 after the Pentagon was attacked. Um, he he was he did give an order to shoot down you know, United Flight 93 to intercept, um, but you know, the military said they did not have time and did not. Um, but it did crash into the ground 23 minutes later. Really? So that was like that was official. Like Cheney said, bring it down. Yeah, and but they. June, yeah, June 1st, 2001, uh, Dick Cheney himself changed protocol for how military could intercept passenger jets that were a threat to uh, American or military airspace. Um, mm-hmm. And if before June 1st, 2001, the military could intercept on their own decision. Um, you know, would, would be like the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld at the time, would be the one okaying that decision you know, through a cell phone he has on him all the time. But on June now 1st, that- Dick Cheney changed it so only he could authorize that. And he did not, and he was not available supposedly until you know minute until after the Pentagon was attacked. Hmm. But four generals say he was in that bunker before that happened. Oh my God, dude! That how how is that fucking crazy for timeline? Um, and not Flight ninety three is that's another one of those like conundrums, like Building Seven. What the fuck really happened with that? I got a I got a quick clip uh, of this, um, and this is these audio tapes that were released. Uh, it's like a lot of like black box or communication from tower to planes. Uh, this one's in particular is interesting. It's a call to Flight 93 that was left open, and this is the audio of the attacker. I think that's what this is. Maybe I'm wrong. Actually, this might be one of the. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. This is one of the planes that that uh, hit. Uh, I think it was the first tower. Anyways. Minutes before disaster, the recordings of air traffic controllers, pilots and hijackers released for the first time, slowly realising the horror that's taking place. American 11 heading for the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Nobody moved. Everything will be OK. If you try to make any move, you'll danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Nobody move, please. We are going back to the airport. Don't try to make any stupid moves. Anybody know what that smoke is in Lower Manhattan? I'm sorry, say again? A lot of smoke in Lower Manhattan. A lot of smoke in Lower Manhattan? Mm-hmm. Out of the uh, top of the World Trade Center building, the major fire. Hey, can you look out your window right now? Yeah. Can you, can you see God about 4,000 feet, about 5 east of the airport right now? Looks like he's... Yeah, I see him. You see guy, look, is he descending for the building also? He's descending really quick, too, yeah. Well, that's... 2,500 feet now. He just dropped 800 feet in, like, a, like one, one sweep. That's, that's another situation. Another one just hit the building. Wow. Wow. Another one just hit it hard. Another one just hit the whole site. The whole building just uh, came apart. Oh Holy smokes. Above Pennsylvania, concerns of a United 93. Somebody call United 93. United 93. Yeah. What's that? I just saying, it looked like he descended there. United 93, verify 350. United 93, Cleveland. Go ahead, Do you have United 93 south of Shard? We hear some funny noises. We're trying to get him. Do you have him? No. They got the piece to Keep remaining sitting. We had a ball board. United 93, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? Because we he, have he, he, did, he did not land. Oh, he's down? Yeah, down. somewhere up northeast of Camp David. American 73 heads for the Pentagon. He did not land. That sounded interesting. That, that is actually very... Um, I didn't even think of that angle at all until I heard that clip. That um, He was northeast of Camp David. Camp David was where the, the secondary place that George W. Bush would lead the country from when he wasn't, um, you know, at his ranch or at the White House. I guess third place, or Camp, or Camp David. He spent a lot of huh. time there. That is true. Hmm. Wow. So, yeah, crazy clip. Um, but but that, uh, that leads me more to think that, you know, United 93 was probably shot down. Um, mm-hmm. the, the crater is, is not that large. The debris field is very large. And it's just another one of those secrets that 
you know, they want to twist the story to make people more heroes. They want to make it a rallying call. They want to make it a propaganda piece. They don't, exactly. they don't want to talk about you know, the possibility that, you know, interior, our forces out here who you know, wanted to manipulate you know, the whole world through mass death and, and destruction and, and be able to get funding, you know, through fear. That's the way to do it. Uh, everybody knows, every, <laughs> the 1% and, and up know that the way to control the masses is through fear. Uh, you can't let a good disaster go to waste. I think this is a, a butchered quote from one of the fucking uh, higher up elites and, and that pe- wish to. <laughs> yeah. And pe- people say, you know, like, well, you know, if it was such a big conspiracy, that someone would have, you know, uh, you know, talked by now. And it's like there's so many other conspiracies that people never talked about that didn't even get uncovered till almost everyone involved was dead. We still don't know what happened completely with JFK. There's so many, um, you know. Um, classified files still in that even trump extended classification on those files it's 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 it, for fuck's sake jeffrey epstein like literally backyard new mexico fucking yeah. zora ranch sits vacant and i'm air quoting here vacant uh, and still has not been touched by investigators no one everyone's just dropping it there's no official case so no one's like pursuing anything and it's, it's like they, they they just would rather not risk you know the possible consequences. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to have that much power, you know, to have that much power to take, th- you know, 3000 plus lives yeah. as and, a chess pawn, you know, and, and the American people would, you know, revolt if they knew that this kind of thing was perpetrated on their populace. If they knew that they were being manipulated this way, if they knew that the largest corporations in the world made a power grab so they could always know what every other company is doing, listening in on everybody, listen to every email, everything. Um, I mean, would they be okay with this? Locked into a position that they can never progress because the people in power remain in power? I mean... I feel like it's been in- incremental brainwashing. Yeah. But- okay, we take a little bit of this. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of this. And we do it constantly and continuously throughout and now we're 2019 and now we're it's like we're being listened to at every moment you know video cameras can turn on at any moment like uh there's government databases with terabytes of uh, you know petaflops upon or i'm sorry petabytes upon petabytes of our information and and even if a new administration let's say obama wanted change and disagreed he couldn't dis- disclassify those things. The, the crimes of the U.S. government would destroy this country. He would have to re- keep the lie a secret to remain in power. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to perpetuate the spying, and that's what pissed me off about it. It's like, okay, yeah. fucking don't divulge. Keep it classified, but why do you have to keep spying, my dude? But then if Trump is so different than Obama, why is he continuing the same? Into infinity. And, and it, it, it's either... You know that all these people, you know, are just plants, which I guess is a possibility. Or again, the CIA has so much control that they could blow up buildings, they could start a war in Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, anywhere they want. Um, they could murder people, they could assassinate people, they could anyone who starts writing reports on them, they could control their cars and crash them into trees. I mean, the, it, the possibilities are endless, and then we don't live in a real free country or democracy you know we're controlled by evil murdering villains we we fucking live in nazi germany <laughs> so okay wait a minute so you're saying cia it's not necessarily the government the government has to turn a blind eye and keep shit secret because the cia is the gangsters that are coming in and fucking shit up almost almost hmm. i mean when it's like I mean, who ruled USSR, you know, the KGB, who became leader of, of Russia after USSR fell, you know, leader of KGB, Putin. Um, Interesting. And who became, you know, president um, after, you know, the, the Cold War and CIA, you know, uh, George H.W. Bush, head of the CIA. You know, like. Interesting. That is true. <laughs> wow. CIA family injected into politics that way. You know, Donald Trump's kind of the outlier, even if you. Two percent, you know, two percent, two percent milk angle. Those motherfuckers are a whole milk. And regardless, of the one percent, you know, like he's not one of your normal one percenters. Uh, I'd say he's a pauper compared to most fucking one percenters. Yeah, and, and his father was probably a KKK member, most likely. 
Yeah, word. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's good to join fraternities. <laughs> it seems all those guys in powers want to do that. It's Skull and Bones, or fucking, you know, KKK, or, you know, uh, Freemasons. Uh, something. Elks Lodge. Yeah, probably Freemasons. All Freemasons. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> yeah, we should yeah. start our own club. Yeah. We should call it, and like, the Dick Masons. The Dick Masons? Yeah. <laughs> what would our ring look like? Like a big dick. Yeah, exactly. Would it be a big dick that, like, wrapped around your finger, or would it be a, a ring that had, like, a gemstone with a dick in it? I don't know. I think either one is good. It's kind of your, you know, choice on preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, is it going to be like the Masons? Do you have to, like, uh, to to join? Or, or are we going out, going around actively recruiting? I mean, I don't know. Um, I haven't thought that far ahead. I can't believe that people have for hundreds of years. Like, you know what? Let's just make a group to fuck with everybody else. And you know what? <laughs> We're going to let people that we like in. Ha, 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 ha. Fuck everybody. Isn't that what they all yeah. do, though? You know what and I mean? then we're going to fucking spew this shit about democracy and voting and free markets. <laughs> but we're colluding all day. Ha, 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 ha. It's totally gamed. Welcome to the club. It's totally fucking gamed. How much dick can you suck before you puke? That's the game. Welcome to yeah. America. And America, it, you know, it wouldn't be. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have as much fun tonight if we didn't have a clip of Donald J. Trump uh, to this very day, today, addressing Never Forget in 9-11. Here we go. Orange man. Today, our nation honors and mourns the nearly 3,000 lives that were stolen from us on September 11th, 2001. On these grounds, 184 people were murdered when al-Qaeda terrorists overtook American Airlines Flight 77 and crashed it into the Pentagon. For every American who lived through that day, the September 11th attack is seared into our soul. It was a day filled with shock, horror, sorrow, and righteous fury. Eighteen years ago, the terrorists struck this citadel of power and American strength. But the enemy soon learned that they could not weaken the spirit of our people. In times of distress, the heart of the American patriot only grows stronger and more determined. Even in the midst of the attack, the world witnessed the awesome power of American defiance. We do not seek conflict. But if anyone dares to strike our land, we will respond with the full measure of American power and the iron will of the American spirit. And that spirit is unbreakable. We had peace talks scheduled a few days ago. I called them off when I learned that they had killed a great American soldier from Puerto Rico and 11 other innocent people. They thought they would use this attack to show strength. But actually, what they showed is unrelenting weakness. The last four days, we have hit our enemy harder than they have ever been hit before. And that will continue. And if for any reason they come back to our country, we will go wherever they are and use power the likes of which the United States has never used before. And I'm not even talking about nuclear power. They will never have seen anything like what will happen to them. No enemy on Earth can match the overwhelming strength, skill, and might of the American armed forces. Each of your lives tells the story of courage and character, virtue and valor, resilience and resolve, loyalty and love. This morning, we make a sacred vow to carry on this noble legacy. Today and every day, we pledge to honor our history, to treasure our liberty, to uplift our communities, to live up to our values, to prove worthy of our heroes, and above all, 
stronger than ever, to never, ever forget. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. 9-11 was an inside job. And Trump, um, what an amazing speaker, right? Doesn't he inspire you? God, it's just... He just instantly goes to the like machismo. We're gonna kill all those motherfuckers. Like the kind of fucking hate speech that drove us to invade a country that had nothing to do with the attacks. And then Al Qaeda cells actually showed up there in Iraq. And then they split off and made ISIS. And then we paid them to invade Libya and Syria. And now we're fucked. <laughs> uh, I don't know who's. I guess we're fucked. Yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't know if they're fucked. This is exactly what they want. And, um, and we're not really fucked. Like, you know, it's not going to change much over here, but you know, there's no hope in stopping the fucking horrible the situation. The endless war. Help. And the, wasn't this one of the campaigns Trump ran on for 2020 and make him was like pulling out of the endless war? Yeah, they, they dropped 40 tons of bombs in fucking Iraq today. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. On an island. Um, did you missed Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel? <laughs> yeah. you, you missed but the I guess perpetrators. You, you missed them. <laughs> and then this fucking Zawari guy is probably fucking sitting in Pakistan in a fucking Abbottabad at the house next to where a fucking Osama was. You want one of those guys? It's probably the house next to Osama. He fucking talked to him every day. It's probably right next door. Probably. <laughs> Shit. Yo, what up, Osama? <laughs> What, what, what up, Shar, Sharwari? Shawahari? Al Zawari. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Al Zawari. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> wow. Not to be confused with that Al Zakari, who's the founder of uh, Al Qaeda in Iraq. Well, he was a terrorist group in Jordan. Then he went to Iraq and joined Al Qaeda in Iraq and made Al Qaeda in Iraq. Well, he called it Al Qaeda in Mesopotamia. And then he split off and made ISIS because they wanted their own caliphate. Hmm. All their names sound the same, you know. It, it mm-hmm. makes it very difficult for us, Indeed. you know, uh, Westerners. Right. Indeed. And yeah, um, what do you think of the TSA? <laughs> oh God, what a waste of fucking time that's turned into. Like, they just want to, like, fucking pat down your crotch, make fucking everything as inconvenient as possible, charge you more for less than ever before. It's it's just a fucking scam. It's, it's uh, many people have used this phrase before, it's security theater. It's, it's the illusion of security at an airport. They've done nothing to stop the events of how they unfolded in their official reports on 9-11. They've not stopped me. Uh, or anyone from boarding an airplane and, and physically, you know, overtaking a crew or physically breaking through that door. I mean, it's, it's just, they installed locks. That's what they did. They installed locks. Cool. Cockpit doors could lock now. But... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, nothing. And it's funny. I feel like it sucked a bit of money out of um, out of the airline business. And in doing so, like, a lot of... You know, we have a lot more crashes now than b- pre-9-11 in that airline companies didn't spend the money to really maintenance their shit. And, uh, so, it, I don't know. It, it's a really fucked up situation that happened right there. Like, and, and it seems that the military was aware. I mean, on the same day, they were literally doing training exercises that simulated planes hijacked and flown into buildings in New York City and Washington, D.C., like, that's literally planned on September 11th, 2001. We're doing training for that that day. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Uh, why were you training for that that day? Why was that a priority on the day that that happened? And again, you touched on this earlier. Like, why were the three people that needed to convene to control a situation uh, all in separate locations all over the map? You yeah. know, and, and not available to react at yep. 9 o'clock in the morning. Rumsfeld out, fucking Dick Cheney out, fucking uh, <laughs> George H. W. Bush reading books upside down in Florida to you know toddlers. Yeah, blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Um. So um, you're you're so 
we're gonna we're going there then. Nine eleven officially Revo stamp on it is an inside job. Inside job by CIA, Bush family and his cronies like Dick Cheney, etc., Donald Rumsfeld, um Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia intelligence, the family of Saud. Uh, I guess we didn't even talk about Dick Cheney's 9-11. Dick Cheney. Fuck that guy. Zombie-ass motherfucker. No heart-having bastard. You think? He doesn't have a heart or a pulse. What makes you say that? He has an artificial heart. He's one of the few people in the world that has an artificial heart. And so he doesn't have like a beating pulse. It's a constant flow. He really has an artificial heart? Yes. Whoa. I thought those were temporary. Like you Not had an artificial... fucking Cheney. You fucking you're Satan himself. You can get fucking anything done. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. That's that's like you know, that's man merging with machine. That's like Alex Jones endgame kind of shit, man. Yeah. He's one of those crazy elites that probably sacrificed babies and fucking children to drink their blood so it's filled with adrenaline so it you know, helps them heal faster. Adrenochrome. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. That shit Dick fucking Cheney's happens. a fucking evil... Uh, he's an evil underworld sideboard. Hmm. I can see it, man. Yeah, he's been see to it. Bohemian Grove. He goes to those Bilderberg meetings. You know, like, I mean, he's fucking deep in that shit. Wow. And uh, I assume he's still alive. That's yeah. crazy. I wonder how long he will live, considering now he has an artificial heart. That's like a big part of it. Your brain don't burn out. Your heart keeps going. You're alive, man. I guess unless you have a major other major organ failure, but still fucking crazy. That's crazy to know. Um, and what about Bush? Mastermind, um, uh, idiot savant, or just complete dunce? Complete dunce, um, just follows dad's orders. Uh, never had the IQ to fucking be a leader. Never. <laughs> right. Oh my god. And Obama, Bilderberg, or Obama was definitely a Bilderberger. He was definitely chosen, um, you know, to to be okay to lead. That they would need to eliminate or force another candidate. Um, he's definitely cooperative. Hmm. Well, 9-11 was the inside job, y'all. You heard it here for the millionth time. And my problem is, is America won't wake up. Uh, you know, I feel like five years ago, people were talking about like, yeah, this is coming to a head. You know, America's waking up to this stuff, man. We're, we're, we see what the game is, you know. Five years pass and we're just even more embedded in social media, even more giving up our rights, even more being spied on even more integrated into the system. Yeah, and, and we asked for less to... evidence on, on things like this. I mean, we, we demanded way more on 9-11 investigation than we ever demanded for Las Vegas shooting investigation. I mean, today, 9-11 uh, first responders demanded again uh, you know, in front of uh, Congress that they want a reinvestigation. Um, but still, in Vegas, we see almost no traction, and they closed that investigation without even giving a motive. Wow. Well, how can you even do that? You know, how can you even do that? How can you say that it's Osama bin Laden like days after? Yeah. And, and we all demanded <laughs> no evidence. We all demanded yeah. more information about it. We wanted to know about Al Qaeda. We wanted to know about Iraq. We wanted to know about mm -hmm. Afghanistan. We wanted to know about Tora Bora, the history of, of them fighting the Russians. We wanted to know all these things when it started happening. We were, were binge watching it on TV. Um, and what happened? What happened where we don't have time to find out why all these people are dying. Hmm. Why, why do we care? And corruption. What? Right? Why do we care about that? Why, why do we care about these people? They're just fodder in the game that we play. Uh, how else are we going to get people to clean our toilets? And then we will destroy them and turn them into soil and green, feed them back to themselves until eventually there are very few and they are very weak. We will merge with machines. We will upload our consciousness to the to the matrix, and uh, we will live forever. Um, <laughs> never yours, the one half of one percent. <laughs> Bilderbergers, the fucking Bohemian Grovists. And you know what's funny is like, I 
can't say that I was really conspiracy minded until I found like Art Bell and then uh, Alex Jones. But the current state of InfoWars and Alex Jones is so sad in comparison. You could look back to the beginning of 2019, January 2019, and hear Alex Jones talking shit about Saudi Arabia. Fast forward, you know, to now, uh, September 11th, 2019, and we're hearing all this, uh, like, be kind to Mossad, be kind to Israel jargon yeah. uh, coming out of his mouth. And you, and very silent about Saudi Arabia in general. Yeah, and Bill Cooper, the, you know, called, told told everyone that Alex Jones was a shill, and and then he told everyone that 9/11 was going to happen. He said that Osama bin Laden was going to be blamed for a very big attack very soon, and then he said in his next podcast or radio show that he, the punishment for him telling that is that they were going to kill him, and they killed him in November 2001. Wow! Wow! There you go. I feel like if Alex Jones was real, he would have been killed long ago. Instead, he was propped up to be a martyr to the uh, to alt media, so that people stopped paying attention to him and started paying attention to CNN. It's but it's backfiring intelligence wise, right? Because all information now is uh, jacked into like hyperdrive, and we can fucking essentially project our consciousness into a you know a, a cybernetic connection. And through that, information is free and quick. It's not as quick as we, it would be with Neuralink, but it's pretty fucking, it's pretty out there. Bro, fucking, I, I know we're talking about nine, but that fucking brought me off a path here for a second. Have you seen how far Neuralink has gotten? It, it, when it's it's going to be introduced with 5G and, and we're doomed. Um, I mean, it, it, maybe I'm going too far conspiracy with it and almost sounding like a fucking religious fanatic. But it sounds almost like some apocalypse level shit. Like, you know, you, you get the mark of the beast, and then fucking Dude. you're you're twenty four seven connected to five G. You know, tracked everywhere. Get all the data you want directly to your brain. You know, you become part of the network, part of the botnet, part of the Borg. You know, the great Dude. Satan. Right. I mean that that's crazy. That's so crazy. I mean, and it's so crazy how how old this um this idea has been and uh, you know how far the technology has come they they've done it a while ago like one you know one synapsis one essential uh, one central like sensor just one you know that's what it started off with and the guy that experimented with it fucking you know half of his half of his face went limp but he was able to make that you know um analog to digital connection to the human mind like this has been going on for for a while so where Neur- Neuralink's, you know, taking the ball and running with these older technologies that have already been in place of like dermal, subdermal implants. You know, there's even companies that fucking check people in on that. They have their like fucking chips inserted into their wrists. So that it's the fucking hit ID so they can like badge into doors and shit. Like that, that, that's 2019. That's what's going on right now. Um, total social control, uh, social engineering and uh, grid lockdown. Okay, so so this is just some weird uh, you know, thinking. So okay, so you say Neuralink's been being worked on for a long time, maybe like even as early. Not, as, not the... as Neuralink, but the idea of human to machine uh, uplink. Like how early? In ninety six, even. No. Um, Two thousand three. Yeah, I'd say ninety six, like ninety four, nine. 94, 96. Well, the reason I chose those two dates is um, those, that's the birth and death date of the clone sheep, Dolly. You know, the first cloned animal, at least that was announced, you know, lived from 96 to 2003. Um, and if, you know, do you think it's possible in the future that you could clone a person, you know, uh, embed them with Neuralink early on, uh, grow them maturity, and then have, like, a, a controllable person? <laughs> sure. Like, like your about... own autonomous person. I feel like you can go one step further. Like you could clone yourself. You could have a body ready somehow like jack steroids into it to, to speed it up, speed up the growth of it or time the growth to when you're going to die and then fucking upload your consciousness to that new body. Yeah. There you but, go. I mean, cloning has been around since 96, you know, that, that worked an actual functional model that made a living animal. So, I mean, and it's been a long time since then. 
And it's come a long way, dude. Um, it's come a long way. It's pretty, pretty fucking easy. I mean, essentially, we clone humans. You know, and yeah. that that exists. Um, I, I, you know, technology-wise, we're at the point where we understand every part of the human genome uh, and can affect it on like a chemical level of the DNA and know what you know each you know each chemical connection mean, each code means. There are genetically modified babies in the wild uh, using CRISPR modification um, in China. Uh, some scientists did modify genetically modify babies, um, and you know was fired for it. But you know the, these are living creatures now that are genetically modified by another human being. Wow, fuck! <laughs> How is that real? You know, and I, I feel like our perspective is skewed because we're like. Uh, pre-internet, uh, post 9-11, you know? Yeah, and we, we went like... way off topic from 9-11. But yeah, yeah, we did. I feel, <laughs> I feel it all links back to the idea that, you know, th there's these super complicated, super technological ideas that are planned for for years and years. And to think that some event like 9-11 could only happen in pure coincidence, you know, like just luck, hijack four planes, all four of them get away, all four of them, well, three out of four get to their target. Like, it it doesn't seem it quite real. It was probably planned for years, if not a decade or more. Mm. Yeah, indeed, if not more. And I feel like families to families, like goals that people who have uh, co-opted power in the world forever have been uh, trying to they've been trying to reach. You know, I don't know, like. Like the way that you could take back um, uh, the connection of, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden to CIA all the way back to Gaddafi. You know, you, this is the same way you can kind of uh, look at the timelines of people's connections to this, you know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Fucking verbose.xyz, we're hanging out. Alex Jones, you fucked up, man. You should have stayed on point. But I get it, man. The money's good. And you don't want to, you know, get deaded. You don't want to get suicided. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a big, fat, fucking chill. I'm Alex Jones, and I shill for anything. Buy my water filters. <laughs> I don't know if he shills for anything. He sure, shills... not for anything. He, yeah. he has his, his low standards. Yeah, he has his low standards. Yeah, exactly. Mossad comes up there, fucking roughs him up a little bit. He says, yes, daddy. Yeah, I mean... And I can blame it. If they showed up at my house, I might too. I'd be like, you know what? Next week we're doing all Israel's good episodes. Sorry, Jose. <laughs> yeah, no way, bro. I fucking... Let's go that hard. Let's go that hard. Let's go. You gotta bounce, you gotta bounce, bro. But fucking... Yeah. Uh, Mossad comes to any of us, dude. Fucking... We make a Blood Brother pact right now. We say, fuck it. We take week. the bullet to the yeah. head. Or next week, verbose from the road, from undisclosed location. <laughs> That's how fucking um, uh, Coast to Coast AM did it forever. Yeah. So I finished off my bottle of whiskey. I did this for you, 9-11. 9-11 uh, was an inside job. I'm sorry that your lives uh, um, were the catalyst for the worst thing that could happen to him. Uh, and the never forgetty part isn't that you uh, you shouldn't be afraid that's the thing that's the condition you got to break about now don't be afraid you know we're all, all gonna die sometime it might as well be in a really cool way like fucking in an explosion or a gunshot or like a knife fight or something don't, you, know, you don't want to go you don't want to go out safe you know what i mean don't yeah no. but don't don't fall victim to fear and you know search for truth search for reality you know to find out what happened you know, honor those people by you know bringing the right people to justice. Hell yeah, Alex Jones, you're a shill. I still want you on the show. Fucking no doubt about it. If you ever want to come on the show, Alex Jones, please do. You're in Austin, te Austin Texas. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Halfway, we'll leave our guns at home, but we'll meet in Midland. <laughs> Fucking uh, bisexual Egypt, uh, obviously harboring terrorists still to this day. I, well. Or at least breeding them, um, and uh, sending them off to Pakistan area. <laughs> uh, fucking 
Bi- bisexual Egypt, but th- you'll, you can never forget, never forget this. On 9-11, the gay is real. And <laughs> we experience this every day of our lives here in America. Don't let it get you down. Just remember, the government, it's not, it's not for you. We're here to do for us. The government serves us. Fuck the government. Fuck the police. 9-11 was an inside job. You guys, be safe. Peace be with all of you. Assalamu alaikum. Allah Akbar. Hail victory, y'all. Fucking we'll see you next time. Deuces. I got a dollar in my pocket that I'm saving just in case I get to where I'm headed and I still need change I feel the ghost of rock and roll take hold of me An overdose of I don't care what you believe From all of Jimmy Page, I'm Kurt Cobain I'm Rolling Stone, lay guns and roses to crush my brain Ashes to ashes, my Me. It's mud and rust to me, that type of feeling when you love destructively. It's clouds are stuck in me, it promised luxury. If I said I trust you, you were done for trusting me. Hate me publicly, away for company. A pray to God, your devil never summons me. Either way, you don't have to say without a Tom McDonald, you exist because of me. I'm fueling the fire with little beautiful liars. They burn the brightest, then I pull out every kid with the pliers. They get a funeral suitable for the rumors that ruined all of the truth in my music. I took the food out of the fryer. I've been hailing back without a burn. My boots made of iron. I keep a cooler full of booze, cause I'm a juvenile tyrant. I never lose, I give him Lucifer, and he knows who I am. So when you meet him, say I said what up the zero survivors. I feel the ghost of rock and roll take hold.